Hi guys, today we're here to go over decision trees. We're gonna go over what is a decision tree, why use a decision tree, then we're gonna go over an example of an already drawn out decision tree about HIV, and then we're gonna go over a real life example of a bookstore using a decision tree that they give to um, their customers to decide the best option. So let's first start with what is a decision tree? A decision tree is a rule-based classifier. Rules can be created manually or automatically, and each decision is usually bi binary in the decision tree. A decision tree is a decision support tool that uses a tree-like graph or model of decisions and their possible consequences, including chance event outcomes, resource costs, and utility. It is one way to display an algorithm. So why use a decision tree? It is easy to understand, so easy that cases can be handled manually to test it out. It lets you mix measurement scales by making everything categorical. The math behind a decision tree is comparatively simple. It can handle almost any data. Decision trees are commonly used in operations research, specifically in decision analysis, to help identify a strategy most likely to reach a goal. A decision tree is a visual representation of a decision situation. The branches, of a, the branches of a tree explicitly show all those factors within the analysis that are considered relevant to the decision. A decision tree generally captures the idea that if different decisions were to be taken, then the structural nature of a situation may have changed dramatically. The most powerful decision tree allows for forward and backward calculation paths to happen. So this is an already drawn out decision tree. It is the chances of you having HIV. So we're gonna first look over the number of partners that you have. And this is the starting node. A starting node is defined as, or the starting node contains all cases. So this is a branch. Both of these are branches. We're gonna first look at the branch that if you have less than five partners, then you are most likely to be HIV negative. If you have more than five partners, this branch leads to other nodes. The possible choices can be made following a branch. So this is needle sharing. So if you have more than five partners and you needle share, and you have, but you have shared less than 15 needle, needles, you are, more light, you are most likely to be HIV negative. If you have needle sharing between 25 and 25 people, um, then you are most likely to be HIV positive. This is, however, a less likely probability than if you catch having HIV than if you needle share and have slept, or if you shared more than 25 needles, then you are most likely to be HIV positive in this circumstance. So you can add percentages here. So such as the number of partners, if you've slept with less than five, the, the likelihood that you are negative would be 5%, say. Also, if you've slept, if you've had more than five partners um, and you've needles shared with less than 15 people, the likelihood that you're negative could be um, 25%. And then if you've shared with 15 to 25 um, people, then you're, the, poss the possibility that you're HIV positive would be 50%. But if you shared them more than 25 um, people, then the possibility of you being HIV positive would be 75%. So we'll go over another example of this to make it a little bit more clear. So this real life example is of what the CU bookstore gives out to the to students deciding whether or not they should buy or sell their textbook or they should rent it. So we're first going to start with textbook. So there are two options here. You can buy and then resell your textbook or you can rent out your textbook. So if you run out your textbook, it is two-thirds likelihood that you will save zero dollars. But if you, um, there's also the one-third likelihood that you will save one hundred dollars if you run out your textbook. This differs from buying and reselling your textbook through, there's three options here. There's one-third percent likelihood that you will save one hundred dollars. And then there's a, another one-third likelihood that you will save $50. And then there's also a third possibility that you will save $0. So this just helps a student analyze what they're, how much they are likely to save 
if they rent or buy and sell their textbook. Through buying and reselling the textbook, you can see that each option is about 33% likelihood. So it doesn't really help um, decide like what is the benefits of buying and reselling. But if you rent a textbook, there's a 66% chance that you will save zero dollars. So if this was the likelihood, you might want to go through for the 66% chance for buying and reselling um, and save $50 or more. So this is what helps um, with students make their decision when buying a textbook at CU. Thank you guys for watching. We hope you have a great day and make good decisions. <laughs>